on July 22nd, which is a couple of days from now, it'll be the eight-year anniversary of my brother passing away. And um, that was my, my older brother, Chris, man. Uh, and I want to dedicate this one to him. Uh, I love you, Carnal. I miss you. I think about you every day, homie. And uh, thanks for shooting me, bro. Yeah, I confess, father, I confess, cause I've been living wrong. What's going on, carnalitos? So yeah, man, my brother fucking shot me. Uh, let me see the scene for you. This happened, uh, it would have been the first or second week of October 1991. Uh, how I know the date very well is because I got arrested and, and my commitment offense and go to the youth authority was on October 19th, 1991. So those are dates that you really don't forget in life. Anyways... It was a typical Friday night, Saturday night, in uh, out here in the valley. Uh, we went to a we went to a party, and uh, uh, somehow, some way, the party got fucked up, man. Which you know, that's what that would happen when uh, cholos were at parties. You're always gonna get fights. You're always gonna get fucking shootings. You're always, it was a whole dismality, especially in the '90s. This was '91. This when this shit was really ramped up out here. Anyways, it's me. It's my carnal. It's two homies from Pacas. And it's one of my homeboys. It's a carload of us. I'm driving. Um, we're, we're at the party, we ended up, uh, like I said, something happened, we ended up getting the boot out of the party, everybody. They pretty much said, uh, everybody's gonna meet up over here. We ended up going to, um, uh, a place up, uh, like where our water shit was, up, up in a canyon, right? There must have been at least, I don't know, 50, 60 people out there. We roll up, we see a bunch of hint already up there, so I tell my brother and, and the homies, I said, you know what, I'm gonna drop you off, I'm gonna come back down, park my shit, and then I'll go back up to the hill. So, all right, Simon. So I dropped these guys off. Um, uh, I went, got my ride, and uh, and parked it. Uh, we all had straps. I know I left mine in the car at the time. Uh, my brother had his, and a couple homies had theirs. So what ended up happening as I'm walking up the hill, I uh, I see this one cat, dude, that we just got into it about a week ago, before that, and uh, I'm like, hey, that's that motherfucker, dude. And then all of a sudden, a big fucking melee breaks out. A big fucking fight breaks out. Everybody's fucking fighting. It's a fucking free-for-all. My homie that was with me, he grabs the fucking strap. He puts it on this fool's head, and it's going click, click. He's fucking clocking it. Click, click. Or at least one click. It was fucking... It, it, the pain had gone out on his, on, his, on his gun. And crazy shit like that happens a lot of times. I don't know if it's karma. I don't know if it's God. I don't know if it's just a higher power looking out for certain people. And when I say looking out, they were looking out for my homie who was trying to shoot him and the guy that was about to get shot. So this whole shit's going on. I hear boom, boom. I look to my left. It's my brother. He gets his gun. He fucking shoots it up in the air because he's trying to disperse the fucking crowd because there's just so many people in there. As he disperses the crowd, the one cat that I saw that I wanted to fuck up, he's kind of fucking a little fucking faded from, from the fight or whatever with the fuck of him getting jumped or whatever was going on. And I look at him. I said, oh, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. My car was way down the fucking hill. So by the time I get down there... He probably, he's probably not going to be there. So I look at my brother. This, this is all happening. You got to remember, this is all happening very quick. My brother shoots. I'm looking at this guy. I go to my brother. I tell him, hey, carnal, give me the strap. I'm going to kill this motherfucker. And I go to get the, the gun. And I pull it from him. Boom. Gun goes off. And simultaneously, as this gun's going off, I got another homie of mine pushing some chick out of the fucking way to go back down to the car. As he's pushing that chick out the way, I'm grabbing the gun. The gun shoots me, goes through my hand, shoots the homie through the arm, and then shoots another homie in the face. So after this whole madness happens, gun goes off, I'm shot, homie shot, the other homie shot. By that time, this fool gets up. He's gone, dude. Everybody just fucking takes off. We, everybody gets in their cars. I go to the fucking doctor or the hospital, right? These two guys go to the hospital too because they're fucking shot. So we got three full shot. It was all fucking friendly fire. I go to the hospital. They ask me if I have insurance. I'm like, fuck no, I don't have insurance. And they pretty much told me I had to go to another hospital. And I say, oh, fuck this, man. What I ended up doing, I ended up going fucking, I don't know if it was CVS, something, bought some alcohol, bought some ramp. Uh, it, it hurt like hell and this shit was about this big. I ended up going to the bathroom. By this time, it's probably, I don't know, like midnight, one in the morning. We're all back except for the homie that got shot in the face. He's in the hospital. The other homie got shot in the arm. It was a flesh wound to it. Went in and out. He's there. That's actually his apartment we're at. I'm in the bathroom. My shit's like a big ball, bro. And it, and it literally was like a, like a TV show. I pulled it out. I squeezed it. And you just saw this big squirt of blood just go shh, like into the sink and into the mirror. I fucking put alcohol. I do whatever little dirty deed. And I fucking wrap it up. 
And the party continues, homie. I'm grabbing a beer. There's fucking... There's bronze. There's dudes. It's... That's how normal this fucking lifestyle was to us back then. It wasn't like something out of the fucking ordinary. It was just another fucking weekend. So finally we're talking. And uh, we're talking with my brother. Everybody's there. They're like, hey, fool. What happened? I fucking pulled it too quick. Or, 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 or it, you know, you shot my mistake. He's like, nah, bro. He's like, nah, cabron. He used to call me cabron. He's like, nah, cabron. I saw your eyes, fool. I knew you're going to kill this motherfucker. But I'm looking around. Dude, there's like fucking 20, 30 witnesses at least that, that, that will testify. There. there was all kind of just regular people. There was all kind of girls. There was all kind of guys. I mean, like I said, the whole thing was about 50, 60 people. But right there in that city, yeah, there would have been about 20 or 30 witnesses that, that I'm not saying they all would have been witnesses. But yeah, you damn skippy. I would have I would have ended up catching that murder. And if my brother wouldn't have held onto that gun, if my brother wouldn't have shot me in the arm... I for sure would have ended up killing that guy. Yeah, so I definitely would have ended up killing this guy. And by killing him, I would have destroyed his family's life. I would have destroyed my family's life. I would have probably ended up doing 20-something years in prison and just been getting out right now, man. So when I talk about this kind of stuff, I'm not talking about to glorify this life. I'm not talking to pump stuff up. I'm talking about that way you see the reality of it. I'm not just making shit up and talking out my ass that I haven't lived this life. You know, you got a lot of young guys sitting here saying, oh, you ain't about that life, you ain't about this. Let me tell you something, fellas. What you think is new, what you think is all brand new, this gang banging, this killing, it's just a rerun, homie. It's a rerun that I have gone through, a lot of other homies have gone through, and uh, we're trying to help you avoid that situation. Now, all those guys that were there, aside from my brother not being here, they all have jobs, some of them have their own business, they're all successful people, man. And one small move like that, and they uh, they could have been gone forever. Uh, actually, all the guys that were there ended up getting prison terms for uh, one one case or another. Not regarding this case itself, but just from other cases. But they ended up going to prison, coming out, and like I said, becoming just regular old guys, you know. Yeah, they're all cholos, they're all ex-cholos, whatever you want to call them. But they're all fathers, man. Some of them are grandfathers, you know. They're husbands, they're, uh, they're brothers, they're, they're productive people in the world. And if we can come out of the 90s and be that homie, anybody can, man. You know, even the homie that, uh, that we were trying to kill, that I was trying to kill, some of the guys later on in life ended up hooking up with the guy. And, and you know, they talk, they're friendly. If I were to see the guy now on the streets... They say, what's up, homie? And we'll just talk about it and chop it up. And pretty much, it'll be a war story between us, you know? A lot of you guys think that this shit's all for a cause. You're doing it for the hood. You're doing it for, for the barrio, for the side, whatever it is. The fucking saddest part about it is you have no clue why you're doing it, homie. Just like I had no clue. All I knew is this guy was from a different neighborhood. And for whatever reason, I was ready to give my life up. And I was at that point. A week later from this uh, shooting... I ended up getting catching a case, and that's what ended up taking me to YA. Excuse me. And the only reason I ended up getting convicted was because they got gunpowder from my left hand. But that gunpowder wasn't from the shooting. It was from actually getting shot. But at the end of the day, the shooting was a blessing, and me going to YA was a blessing, man. It took me off the streets at the time where I could have caught a murder, where I could have caught more time. You know, it, it gave me it gave me time to to grow. Even though I did come out later on and keep and kept doing the same fucking shit, at least it gave me time to grow. Because a lot of you guys, the way you're thinking now, especially if you're young, you think you're gonna think that way when you're older. Nah, brother, we all grow. At least most of us do, man. If if you're still thinking that same mentality that you were as a kid, as a thirty year old man, as a forty year old man, as a fifty year old man, you're not gonna get nowhere in life, homie. All you youngsters who think that that life is is the way to go it's it's plain and simple we have low self-esteem man at that time of my life i was 16 years old and yeah my self-esteem was in the gutter brother because if i'm willing to spend the rest of my life in prison and i'm willing to kill you that means i don't give a shit about myself i don't care i don't care i, I didn't care about myself and i'm not gonna care about you you know the the biggest thing in life that we take for granted it's freedom, man. It's our soul, brother. And we only have so many years in this world. When you're young, you think you're going to live forever. But as you get older, you start realizing, wait a minute, dude, this fucking game's going to end. And am I going to finish it off in a fucking cell block? Am I going to finish it off with a fucking being a drug addict? Am I going to finish it off not having shit in life? And when I mean not having anything in life, I don't mean fucking having a nice car, having a nice house. No, man. I mean having your kids fucking prepared for life. Having a fucking wife at home when you get there. Having family, you can actually go out, have a barbecue, go to the park, enjoy life. God. Now, life is so fucking short and precious, but we're too busy fucking fighting each other and uh, trying to show who's 
the biggest, hardest vato. Well, you know what the biggest, hardest vato is? That vato that gets up every morning, Monday through Friday or Saturday or working seven days a week, takes care of his family. It's the vato who's, le who's leaving that real legacy for his family. What's the legacy you're going to leave? You're going to leave the hood? You know what the hood's going to leave you? Nothing, homeboy. Oh it's going to leave you nothing but debt. It's going to leave you in a chair. It's going to leave you in prison. It's going to leave you with drug addict. It's going to leave you with kids that don't fucking respect you. That ain't what being with the business is. Being with the business is taking care of your family, homie. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to shoot this positive message to, to everybody, homie. Like I said on the, on the last one. North, south, east, west, it don't matter to me. We, it, as Rasa, we need to start fucking taking accountability for ourselves and step our game up, homie. Because the game, hey, it's not in prison, man. That's fighting for crumbs, carnal. Literally, you're fighting for crumbs, homie. The money's out here. The business is out here. So other than that, carnalitos, I appreciate the subscriptions, man. We hit 5K this week, which uh, means it's 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 uh, growing slowly but surely, man. Uh, other than that, uh, let's keep this positive shit going and let's make the Rasa aware, man. We can... Uh, we can come up in this fucking country. We can do our thing, but we got to do it together, fellas. Other than that, uh, you guys have a great weekend. And, uh, Carnal, thanks for shooting me, homie. Uh, yeah, I confess, father, I confess. Cause I've been living wrong.